come to the rink and try and win championships, and that's what it's all about. When you look from the outside and you watch this team, like, I know we're going to have a good, real good, solid hockey team this year. Welcome back to Fireside Rangers. I'm your host, Anthony Rivardo, joined by my co-host, Eric Wilson. And today, we're going to be discussing some of the impending free agents that the Rangers have entering this offseason, entering the free agency period. Andrew Kopp and Ryan Strom. Now, of course, those two play the same position, and they're both about to get contracts much larger than the ones that they were previously pay, uh, playing on. So how much money can the Rangers realistically tie up to the center position when they've already got Mika Zibanejad under contract with over eight and a half million uh, AAV. So that's going to be the topic of discussion in this video. And we're going to be kind of debating whether or not the Rangers should be re-signing Ryan Strom or Andrew Kopp. Who do we prefer of those two players? But before we get into all that, Eric, how are you doing? And what are your thoughts on this topic? I'm doing pretty good. Um, obviously, as we know, I, I don't like Ryan Strom. But, you know, there are a couple of things that we need to consider before um we really make our choice on which player we want to choose to keep on our team because the way it's looking like with the salary cap, uh, we probably won't be able to keep both. Um, you look at their points though, you know, they're pretty similar in points per game. Um, ever since we acquired Andrew Kopp at the trade deadline this year, he's played phenomenal. We've been playing him on the wing on the same line as Panarin and Strom. So he's playing, put on the same numbers and not even his natural position. So I think if we were to move him to the center, he'd play even better. So that's also another factor that we would want to consider. Yeah, absolutely. And when you're talking about their uh, productivity, respectively, between the two of them, uh, Ryan Strom did pick up 54 points in 74 regular season games, and he added nine points in 19 postseason contests. Andrew Kopp had 53 points in 72 regular season games with 18 of them on the blue shirts. Of course, he was acquired right before the uh, trade deadline midseason. And he also added six goals, including 14 total points in 20 playoff contests. So very productive players here, both very good players. But Eric, I know you really dislike Ryan Strom as a player. Why don't you uh, shed some insight as to why you feel that way? All right. Well, you just look throughout his career, he's never really been that good of a player. When he started off with the Islanders, he had a lot of trouble. And then he was over in Edmonton. He pretty much was a bust there. And then he comes to us and he's put on a very good team on a line with Artemi Panarin. And all of a sudden he becomes a 50-point scorer. And, you know, it's good that he is being productive, you know, picking up points. But you can't overlook the fact that most of these points that he's getting come is because he's playing with one of the best passers in the NHL. Um, when you look at a guy like Andrew Kopp, who spent most of his career, maybe his entire career on Winnipeg. And, you know, Winnipeg historically hasn't been that good. And he's been putting up the same number of points consistently throughout his career on a lesser team. So I think when you compare the two side by side, I mean, they look a little similar. You, once you consider in all the factors, it's very clear that Ryan Strom is the worst of the two players. And then you can just see that the way that he plays throughout this last season, he played pretty good, pretty consistently. And there was one game in the shootout, he missed a wide open net, which cost us the loss. And then ever since then, his confidence and his play just wasn't the same throughout the rest of the season. It seemed like that was just the start of this downward trend that he just never was able to recover from. So maybe going into next season, uh, he'll start fresh with a lot of more, a lot more confidence if he's still on the team. He said in, in throughout postseason interviews that he does want to stay on the New York Rangers and he thinks he considers our team his home. Um, but I don't, I'm not sure what's going to happen. You know, there's a big decision to make. I think clearly Andrew Cobb is the better option. Put him back on his natural position at center and let Ryan Strom go. But, you know, yeah, just Andrew Cobb, so much better. Yeah, and as you just mentioned, Ryan Strom is hoping to be re-signed by the Rangers. Uh, I have a quote from him here, quote, My first choice is still to be a New York Ranger. I think I've got them in the indication. That's my feeling. If that's not the case, then we will cross that bridge when we get to it. So, end quote. But that almost sounds like he's kind of hearing maybe he's not coming back. That, that's how I'm reading that quote, is that he can kind of tell the writing might be on the wall as badly as he wants to be a New York Ranger. Maybe it's not super likely that he's actually staying with the team. Um, and of course, we'll, we'll figure that out soon enough. But when you take a look at Ryan Strom and players of a similar talent level to him, they're getting paid when they're putting up that these numbers that Ryan Strom is putting up at his position. They do get the bag. And um, the Rangers previously had Ryan Strom at a four and a half million dollar cap hit. 
but with the expiring contract, he's going to be an unrestricted free agent. Other teams can make him offers. And when centers score at the pace that he was scoring and put up the points that he put up and they become unrestricted free agents, they typically do get paid quite a lot of money. Um, in fact, some are saying that he could get anywhere from seven to eight million on average annually, which is, of course, a huge number to throw out there. The Rangers, I believe, only have around thirteen and a half million dollars to spend this free agency in total. They've already got eight and a half million tied up in Mika Zibanejad as a center right now. So it's kind of hard to envision a world where Ryan Strom is going to get a projected contract of seven years, seven point one five million or four years, $6.7 million per year. It's kind of hard to envision him getting a contract that large considering the amount of money that is currently possessed by the Rangers. But, uh, Eric, I know your thoughts on Ryan Strom. You're not too crazy about him. You prefer Andrew Kopp. But when you hear those kind of contract numbers projected for Ryan Strom, you know, where players similar in his position at his talent level are getting around $8 million per year, and Strom is projected to get anywhere from 6.7 to 8 million. How do you feel about that? And do you think that there's any world where that contract could be worth worth it to re-sign Ryan Strom? I don't think it would ever be worth it for seven or eight million, considering, like you said, we only have around 13 and a half million to spend on all these players this offseason. But you know, this is something we've seen around the league for the last few years. Players are getting huge contracts that they don't really deserve. You look at players like Seth Jones, defenseman over in Chicago, signed like a 10 million year deal. And it just has not been worth it. Pretty much destroyed like the economy of that team. So I definitely think that's something that the Rangers should never consider doing uh, for a player like Ryan Strom. The one benefit that we might have with Ryan Strom would be that since this is his hometown team, he wants to stay here. Maybe he'd be willing to take a pay cut just to stay with us, you know, uh, Andrew Kopp, he's only been here for like less than half a season. He might just be looking for the bag, trying to make as much money as possible. So the only way that like I would see signing Strom over Kopp to be a good thing is for the pay cut. So we would be able to save money and spend on other players like Frank Vitrano and Georgiev and anyone else who needs contracts. But other than that, Ryan Strom definitely does not deserve seven to eight million. And I'm not sure where Kopp is looking on the market, you know, how much he's going to be looking for. And I'm sure it's going to be something in a similar range. So it just depends on who's cheaper and who can who would be the better deal, really, is with what comes down to it. Yeah, and there is a chance, you know, the Rangers might go into this free agency period with the intention of re-signing Andrew Kopp and letting Ryan Strom go. But if the money gets too high for Andrew Kopp and it's not worth it, they'll probably circle back around to Ryan Strom and be like, hey, hometown discount. Maybe we can get you for around 6 million or less. And that's definitely a possibility. That's something that people have predicted or projected for Ryan Strom is that he could end up taking a cheapened contract considering the state of the Rangers, um, the state of where he'd be playing on the Rangers line as well. Um, and the, the amount of playing time that he would be getting with New York. And of course, Rangers salary cap situation, you know, having a cap situation where they don't have a lot of money to spend. You could see Ryan Strom potentially taking a pay cut just to stay with the team um, and maybe take uh, turning down a more lucrative offer. But when you take a look at Andrew Kopp now, we'll transition over to him and discuss the uh, pros and cons of keeping him. As we mentioned, keeping Ryan Strom basically boils down to whether or not they are able to re-sign Andrew Kopp. And when you look at Andrew Kopp, 27 years old, um, the team's top trade deadline acquisition, 53 points in 72 games, um, like I said, 18 with with the Rangers and 14 points in 20 playoff contests had a super productive season. And he did have a quote discussing this. He said, quote, my first thoughts are how I can get better as a player over the next couple of weeks. I'll evaluate basically hear from Gerard Gallant and Drury where they see me long term, not just next year, but hopefully four or five years, a lot to take in to make the best decision. So he's clearly evaluating his options. Yes, he wants to re-sign with the Rangers, but I think that last sentence there, a lot to take to take in to make the best decision, that kind of tells me that Andrew Kopp is not solely looking at the Rangers, which is a little different than from the tone of Ryan Strom's quote, where he's kind of saying, I want to be with the Rangers. I just i am not sure if they really want me back. Andrew Kopp is kind of saying, I want to see if the Rangers are still the best fit for me. And I think that kind of falls in line with what you were saying, Eric, the fact that he's only been here for half a season. You know, he doesn't have that hometown mentality that Ryan Strom has. And this, of course, could attract more teams to come in with contract offers for Andrew Kopp and inflate his 
contract offers and inflate his price on average annually. So what are you thinking, Eric? What are you willing to pay for uh, Andrew Kopp? And how do you feel about him potentially, you know, evaluating his offers this offseason? Yeah, I think he's definitely going to receive a few offers from uh, like at least four or five teams, which will definitely inflate his price. Um, when it comes to the price I'd be willing to spend on him, I think it's pretty similar to Ryan Strom, where I would like to keep it under six, six and a half million per year, because we can't forget about these other free agents that we need to sign to keep our team intact. You know, it comes down to more than just these two players that we're discussing today. Um, so if either of them, Strom or Cop, wanted higher than six point five million, I would even consider maybe letting both of them go and then trading for a new center if that might be an option for us. I'm not sure who's out there on the trade blocks right now in the center market. But I think Ryan, um, Andrew Kopp is a perfect fit for the Rangers. Um, as you saw at the trade deadline when we acquired him, he just came in and started picking up points right away. There was very little transition time for him and he fit right in with our style of play. Um, and then even on his off wing, playing on the wing on the second line for us. So I think when it comes to play wise, his best option would be to stay with us so he can still feel comfortable on a team that he's played on and has been productive on. But money-wise, who knows? There are a lot of teams out there, especially in the West, who have a lot of salary cap that might be willing to drop a lot of money to get him. Hopefully his time with the Rangers and the playoff run that he's had with us will motivate him to want to come back, sort of like an unfinished business type thing. But I guess we'll see what he wants. He has no loyalty to us so far, um, but hopefully – he wants to stick with us and jury will be able to make a nice deal with him. Yeah, that's the hope. And of course, Andrew cop is wrapping up a one-year deal that he signed with the Winnipeg jets for 3.6 million. Um, but according to Jeff Merrick on HNIC cop is in line for a new contract in the neighborhood of 5.5 million uh, average annually. So if Chris jury is willing to go five years, he could get this deal done. But if Cop feels he wants to test the market, again, that could cause the Rangers to swing back around on Ryan Strom. Um, and then things will get really interesting. But when we take a look at another projection, there's another projection as well for Andrew Cop's contract. This one is projected at four years, $5.768 million on average annually. So I think the ballpark for Andrew Cop is around five and a half to six million. But when you're talking about Ryan Strom, you're going to hope that he takes the discount underneath six million. But there might be a team that offers him seven to eight million is really what we're reading here. So I guess, you know, you kind of already made the case for why you think Andrew Kopp is the better player, why you think he should be re-signed. But what do you think the, the league is seeing that makes Andrew Kopp the less valuable player in comparison to Ryan Strom? Um, I think it's really just consistent production. You know, you take a guy like Ryan Strom who has just been putting up 50 points a season, you know, for the last few seasons. But as I previously said, it's just due to the fact that he's playing on a great team with guys like Artemi Panarin. Um, and then like Andrew Kopp, obviously he's been doing pretty good too, and he is going to be looking for that pay increase. Ryan Strom isn't a, that much of a big name player outside of the New York Rangers. You know, he's not that well known around the league. So teams might be thinking they can get him for a cheaper contract. Um, that's really all it comes down to. Ryan Strom has been receiving a lot of hate from his play recently. Um, a lot of it's a little exaggerated. Obviously, the, the amount of that I hate on him, I know he's not that bad. He still has a lot of good aspects to his play. But teams are probably just looking and thinking they can get him on a cheaper deal than a bigger name like Andrew Cobb. Yeah, absolutely. And when you take a look at these two players, I think it's going to be an interesting debate uh, had through the offseason until the decision is made. We'll see, of course, what the Rangers decide to do. And as soon as they make their decision, we'll be updating you right here on Fireside Rangers. But let us know down in the comment section below, who do you prefer, Andrew Cobb, Ryan Strom? Let us know how much you are willing to pay for each of these players and who do you think the Rangers should sign. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this episode. We'll catch you all in the next one. Have a good one. And let's go, Rangers. Let's go, Rangers. He shoots, he scores, he scores, Rangers, Rangers, Rangers.